Okay, we're here to talk about why Ansible versus Salt versus Nonier is the wrong question to be asking. Uh, and go ahead and add you know, tools like Terraform or Custom Solutions, but let's be honest with ourselves, the, the title is long enough, didn't need any more uh, to be added to it. Really what this is, is a practical guide to tool choice. That's what all this kind of breaks down to. With that, I'll do just quickly introduce myself. I'm Ken Slenza, a managing director at Network to Code. Uh, I was just I was kind of one of your traditional network engineers, always coding and programming in the background. Uh, you know, throughout my various different you know network teams I was associated with. I uh, became full time network automator when I joined Network to Code in 2016, and I have you know about 20 years in the industry. You know, got, got my start in uh, the Air Force uh, in about a decade at Kinsey as well before you know, joining Network to Code. All right, I'm going to forego kind of you know a formal agenda. I just jump right into it due to time constraints. But what is the current landscape, you know, at least per social media, media at least, you know, per my interpretation? Uh, what I see a lot out there, right, on, you know, various different platforms for, you know, things like Reddit or uh, you know, Slack or t Twitter, you know, uh, a new network automation engineer is going to ask something like, um, they want to know something like, what's the best tool? You know, Ansible versus Nordium, right? A lot of questions like this. And, the, you know, the community, of course, will respond with, you know, their personal preference, you know, their experience. But no real context from 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 the requester about that. You know they didn't provide any, and that causes a problem because you know there's a strong correlation responses. But you know based on responding, you already one have to have some kind of technical ability, right? You've already had to at least experience, you know, kind of evaluate these tools, work with them in some capacity. So there's already you know some some delta between the requester and the responder. Uh, and then often you very rarely are going to kind of match up on industries, you know, going you know, from extremes like large financial to cloud and gaming on, on, on the other side, right? And that really means, you know, generally, you know, what I'm getting at here is there's different requirements across those different verticals. Okay. And then when, if you do some independent research, which everyone should do, and you kind of go through the blogs, you see them talk a lot about the engineering challenges kind of solve with it. And really like, you know, it gets to, to the speed. And, you know, let's talk about things like, you know, why it was easier for that individual blogger. And, you know, it, it's great. It, it, it's actually a great service to the, uh, the entire community that they take the time to kind of you know, provide this information. But, of course, it's just but one part of that information. So if I'm making the claim that, you know, you know, that's not the right question to ask, what is, you know, the right question to ask? And I don't want to say it's the right question, but at least it's moving, you know, the question along here, right? What requirements does this solution fulfill, right? That's kind of getting getting that way. Now, to be honest with myself, even better yet, something like, here are my requirements. How does this solution address them? But that doesn't roll off the tongue as well, so we'll just kind of stick with the original. And okay, okay, I get it. This is, you know, this is you know still a very simplistic question, but I only got 15 minutes and that's what we're gonna go with. Uh, but, you know, full transparency, That's this is not the whole story, of course. All right, so as I kind of work with, you know, various different customers, uh, you know, and they're doing their, their product evaluation. Uh, generally speaking, it is a technical evaluation, right? 80-20 kind of broke down. 80% technical evaluation on things like, does it have good APIs? How fast is it? How much memory and CPU? How, how big are the servers are we gonna need? And then 20% things like uh, kind of commercial support and training offerings around it, right? So yeah, you know, great, you know, certainly a good start. But I think something <clears throat> better, you know, would be to kind of talk about use cases and requirements. And okay, I get it. You know, I'll just pause right here and say, yes, I know this is not kind of brown, great ground, groundbreaking material here. But I think the community has kind of, you know, lost touch a little bit this. And if you if you are out there, re, you know, in the community, kind of look at this, it might not be, you know, you know, very obvious, right? There's kind of a lot of opinions about tools out there within the community. So I think it's important to kind of reset and and talk about this. Right? So when I talk to engineers, they tend to describe requirements. And you know, uh, not an underlying use cases, right? And so what I mean by that, I'll hear something like, "Hey, I need a uh, hundred. Um, I, I need to connect to a hundred devices in a minute." Okay, great. Well, why? When do you need to do this? Well, yeah, I need to. I need, I need to, right? And I have to have it. And the conversation kind of just falls apart from there, right? And you get to the where it's probably not needed. Uh, you know, this is kind of a personal take. But I really think you know a functional requirement. You know, without use case, is really not a valid requirement, right? Uh, you know, if you can't describe when it's been used before, why should we spend time to kind of build out those capabilities? All right, so just to give a quick example, right? So I'll hear something like this often. We need some minute failover for our automation platform. 
okay, well, is that valid? And, you know, of course, the, the answer is always, it depends, right? If you're a gaming cap, uh, gaming company and you're kind of, you know, uh, uh, making decisions based on real-time traffic flows and you have a completely automated system and it's going to affect your business, well, yeah, that, that's a real requirement. But if you're a, kind of a large financial organization and the only time you're running your automation platform is during change windows and they're always an hour long, uh, it's probably not a requirement. And to be honest, even, you know, if you miss a few, so the requirement's probably a few hours, right? Even if you miss a few, you know, kind of change windows, I think it's fine for most organizations. Of course, there's always edge cases, but, you know, just talking about an average, and that's kind of the point is to do your own evaluation here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, uh, another thing is when you talk about your use cases to someone who does kind of these systems, you can marry that information together. Uh, you can start understanding, you know, you know, when, you know, the use cases may already be covered, right? So one common thing I'll often hear is something like, we need a workflow to remove configuration. But that kind of remind you know, the person that, hey, we're building a solution that deploys configuration to clearly begin with, which already puts the, the, end, ed, the end configuration in the, the intended final state, which means it removes those configurations. So you don't have to build dedicated workflows for that, right? Great. <clears throat> So uh, as I'm kind of working with the customers, I kind of noticed you know, three primary buckets. Again, you know, big caveat here, mostly large enterprise. There's certainly things outside of this, but by and large, this is what I see. Uh, three primary kind of you know, uh, you know, time-based requirements, you know, speed requirements. Daily jobs, right? This is anything from backup configurations to configuration auditing. And really, the only thing that matters is, is it less than 24 hours? Because once it goes over 24 hours, that means the job never stops and actually, you know, never completes, right? Bulk global changes, you know, something like changing, you know, across, across your entire fleet, you know, NTP or DNS uh, configurations only happens a few times a year. Again, 24 hours is often fine. <clears throat> so uh, the other, you know, more frequent is kind of like change management. Your daily, you know, port configuration changes, VLANs and moves, firewall, load balancers, those type of changes. 10 minutes is usually way way fast enough for for most people honestly it could even be longer by and large if i'm not to do anything between the time it's just clicking a button then we're fine so with that kind of you know trying to marry those two uh, i was trying to get better understanding of you know in the community what are the actual drivers am i seeing something different than you know with my customers and the rest of the community is so i posed a question on on, on twitter uh when evaluating your primary network automation platform what is the number one driver and that choice from the following options. Key from the following options. Uh, feature completeness, speed to connect to devices, speed to build solutions, ease to build solutions, right? And if you kind of believe the, the, the hype out there, what people are talking about, you probably expect some, something like this, right? You know, speed to connect to devices is the utmost important, right? That's what people tend to be talking about, you know, worry about, concerned about, you know, now I actually, you know, theorize, you know, I, my thought process would be something like this, right? This is my expectation. I thought features and 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 the ability to build solutions, how quickly you could build solutions, was going to be neck and neck. I really didn't know which would come out ahead, but I was fairly certain one of them would be, you know, the the winner. What actually happened was ease, ease of getting started was the the, the by a long shot the, uh, the the biggest mover for for people. Uh, you know, that, that vote in, within the poll. Now, what does that tell you? You know, first and foremost, it tells you this is not a scientific poll, right? This is not a double blind study or something like that. This is just people who happen to, you know, look at Ken's Twitter feed and happen to click on yes or, you know, one of the four options, basically. So certainly not scientific, but it did kind of, you know, it does, you know, uh, show you uh, that even though this is highly influenced by people, you know, that may uh, you just be getting started and thus be kind of, you know, uh, you know, follow me on Twitter or, 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 or friends of people follow me on uh, Twitter. Um, but it also did prove at least, or at least show that, uh, speed was not actually that important for people, which did kind of, you know, uh, uh, was in line with my expectations, I should say. <clears throat> okay. So what should we be looking at? Right. You know, can't just kind of look at one model of review. You really, this is the whole point of this is better analytical data, right? Better product choice. And you should be building something like this, some kind of score sheet like this, where you kind of look at your functionality and compare, you know, what, what your prioritization is and what the tools provide you, right? You see this in market literature all the time, uh, but do your own, you know, evaluation, of course, right? And better understand 
what this means to you. All right. So with that, just some quick, you know, parting thoughts here. Right. First, you know, I've seen this, you know, this uh, delineation between the haves and have nots. Right. There's kind of like I kind of work with a lot of groups and there is a, a few high performers there. Right. People are often spending their own time and they're catering to, to themselves by and large. Right. They're building solutions that make the most sense for them, but not for the larger group. How are other people going to train and learn and so forth? Right. And what they're trying to solve is some of the harder problems, which can be harder to solve in some solutions than others. But really, you know, one of the things I think matters most is, you know, solving most use cases simply that can allow most engineers to be self-sufficient. And, 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 and automation that's built that isn't adopted is going to be a problem. Like you fundamentally want and need the automation to be adopted. So you need the engineers to be self-sufficient. You always be fixing those easy things if they can't understand the platform. Right. I think that's kind of a guiding principle here. The next thing is, uh, you know, writing automated workflow and code. It's actually a smaller part than you, than you might imagine. Uh, building out capability for non-functional requirements and maintaining access to the data. Take up a bulk of your time. So just kind of, you know, weigh that within the averages of everything. Uh, programming with handcuffs is actually valuable. And I kind of use, you know, the analogy of like if you're starting with Normier, Right. You could you're, you have real Python. You have capabilities to do whatever you want, whenever you want. Try not to. Right. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. So really try to you know, live within those kind of rules and those constructs. You'll be much better off, you know, I think. And honestly, for myself, I learned a lot by kind of having those handcuffs and having to build solutions within them rather than go build some crazy function to do whatever it is I need uh, for that one use case and basically incurring tech for that. It is costly to introduce cool, you know, new tools, but also there's a tremendous amount of value you learn, right? And I'll say that no one can know, you know, what is needed for your your organization's kind of automation until you start building some of it, right? You cannot possibly understand all the different, you know, kind of components that are needed from both the cultural and technical level, right? And so code, code that's not in the final implementation isn't necessarily what you waste, waste of code, right? You know, just something to, to consider. All right, just, just to me, personal plea, I don't think we need, you know, these two worlds, you know, this tool stinks or that tool's awful. I don't think it's kind of, you know, further helping the community, you know, making people make decisions, right? Just why my tool works well, why this is great, right? Those kind of things. And just, you know, just to, just to go back to the original, what that's the, this is a better question to be asking. What requirements does the solution fulfill, right? Kind of much better. And that is all I have. Thanks for your time.